Um, hello? Um, good, good afternoon. Is everybody there? Can you hear me? I'm not sure. Nobody. Hey, hi. Sorry, but, uh, so good afternoon, students. Um, can you all hear me? Uh, okay, yeah. Sorry, I'm a bit, I was a bit late. I had some internet uh, difficulties, so I had to connect and uh, disconnect and connect again. Um, but yeah, thank you for being patient with me. Uh, so yeah, let's start with our webinar. So yeah, today we're going to be discussing future-proof JavaScript and the why's behind JavaScript. So this is pretty cool. Think of this as a, like a rundown of the future of JavaScript. And yeah, if you're looking forward to like seeing how JavaScript has been like changing over the years and why perhaps there are updates and why JavaScript only is updating. So that'll be a cool session for you guys. So yeah, so that's what they do. Let's begin. Yeah, so there, there am I standing there smiling. Uh, so I'm going to be your host today. Um, so yeah. Sound is also good. Okay, let me. Uh, can you hear that? Is that better? Uh, yeah, so just let me know if the sound is still um, a bit bad. I can move this to my volume. Yeah. Can I turn up the sound? Okay, let me. Yeah, I think my sound is actually turned up. Just let me know. Maybe I can just speak louder. Okay. Cool. Okay. No worries. Okay. Awesome stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'll just try to increase uh, intensity in my volume. So yeah, volume is gonna be a bit. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. So just let me know if uh, yeah, if you can hear me again. I'll just continue. Anyways. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. Welcome, guys. Uh, the name of this uh, session will be uh, Future Proof JavaScript. Uh, so yeah, again, so yeah, so just to basically discuss the goals and the overview of the course, basically what we want you students to get out of the course is just to gain a deeper understanding on JavaScript, to basically run down an overview of the brief history of JS and where it came from and why we're using JavaScript, uh, to learn uh, how to apply future JavaScript concepts and why you should be applying the future JavaScript concepts and I think this is the most important for you to basically build on top of what you've sort of gained the, the information and the resources you learn uh, throughout this webinar. So that will be cool. Um, so yeah, I'm looking up for number four for you to implement and to learn and to move forward in your learning experience. So that will be super cool. Um, so yeah. So yeah, so I've basically got a, a image just highlighting uh, just like a timeline of JavaScript. So yeah, basically the thing of this is like when JavaScript actually started and then like this is like of course ongoing and stuff like that. So it's, I'm going to of course explain it um, using words, but this is just like a visual representation of JavaScript. Um, so yeah, it started uh, uh, in 1990, or they've been working on it before 95, but uh, sorry about that. But yeah, it was made in 1995 by a guy named Brandon Ike. He actually made JavaScript in 10 days. Surprise, surprise. So for those COVID uh, gurus out there, uh, it's possible So you guys. Uh, so yeah, hi, hi everybody. Sorry about that. Um, my yeah. So I just muted myself because I was just uh, yeah. I had some sound difficulties on this side, and uh, yeah, someone was speaking over me, and so it was a bit difficult. So the person moved over. So sorry about that. Um, so it should be clear now. You shouldn't be hearing any background noises or anyone in the background. 
So just let me know or yeah. Anyways, yeah, so I'm gonna continue. I'm not sure where I left off, but I was speaking about Brandon Aid and he created, I'm not sure if that's how you say his name, uh, but Brandon Aid, he created uh, JavaScript in 10 days. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. He's actually a guy from Netscape, which was like a big company back in the days. And so they developed uh, JavaScript in 10 days. And then uh, in 2000, in 1998 and nine, they introduced like the ES and the ECMA models. So that's basically like the ECMA script. Think of them as the governing body of the web. And so they basically like um, specified like the features and stuff like that for JavaScript. So they're like the ES crew. And then, so basically JavaScript has been silent for like quite, quite a bit of that. If you follow the history of JavaScript, you actually see that for quite a number of years, there was no improvements whatsoever. And so it went silent for a long time. And only in about 2009, they actually uh, started implementing changes and started working on like updates to JavaScript because it was like really outdated and stuff like that. And they wanted, of course, to like um, make changes to JavaScript because like the internet was changing and technologies were coming out and stuff like that. And, you know, specifically web technologies, so they have to keep up to date. So then in 2015, that was when most of the changes that they were implementing over the years was actually like um, put out to the market and stuff like that. So they basically named it ES6, uh, which is like JavaScript 2015. Uh, so think of this as like the modern JavaScript, like all the updates and all the changes that all the developers have been working on sort of considered to be like this is best practice or so this is good to be implemented in JavaScript. They sort of implemented it in, in ES6 in uh, 2015. And then from then onwards, they've, they've constantly been making updates and changes to, to JavaScript. As many of you may know, there's like ES7 now, ES8, ES9 is also out. And I think ES10, they're probably making ES10 now. It's probably out. But yeah, so JavaScript is always like making changes and updates and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so basically we like uh, constantly evolving on the web. So that is cool. Yeah. Cool. Just let me know. Is the volume is this volume still fine or can I should I should I continue? Okay, let me move on next. Okay, cool. So summary. Okay, cool. So yeah, basically um, a lot of the newbies may find the confusion between Java and JavaScript, especially if you have no experience whatsoever and you JavaScript. So again, like they are not related at all. Uh, when JavaScript was actually made, it was actually called Mocha. So you will see here uh, by the guys from Netscape when they made it initially, they, they named it Mocha. But because back in the days, you know, JavaScript, Java, Java actually is quite a, a conventional and a very old school language. So back in the day, JavaScript was like big and was popular. So they actually stole, like they basically like got the trademarks and they basically stole the name so that people would think that, uh, yeah, it's related. So that's the cool fact. But yeah, it's not related at all. They just use that for the name. Uh, and then, yeah, between 96 and 97, that's when uh, uh, ECMA actually started like updating and started making the changes. So that's fine, great stuff. Awesome, guys, thank you for letting me know. Uh, so yeah, that's just a brief summary of JavaScript. It's not related to Java. Java is another language. Um, JavaScript is a language that we use to write web um, technologies and stuff like that. Java is another language. So just to clarify that for the newbies and just for people in general. So yeah, why JavaScript? Uh, sorry about that. Uh, this just this with my. I've just got these notifications popping up here. Sorry. So yeah, why JavaScript? So yeah, it's an important language. It's required to develop websites. So a web developer must know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because these languages they sort of work in interchangeably uh, and they interact with each other. So you use, for example, if you like, uh, if you are like new to this and you don't exactly know how they all work together. Uh, a quick overview of somebody will basically be that HTML is just like the um, structure or the markup of the website. CSS is like the styling, giving, um, positioning things on the screen and so on and so forth. Sorry about that. Let me just do this. Uh, let me close this window. And JavaScript basically sort of like enhances the interactivity of the website. So think of it as like uh, when you're clicking buttons, when the, something is moving across the screen, so it sort of like adds, like it's sort of like adds movement and interactivity and flow to your website. It gives life to your website because 
just with HTML, your, your website is a li li little bit too static. And in CSS, maybe it's a little more dynamic, but it's not as dynamic as you can make it with JavaScript. So JavaScript just brings life to the page. Just like, so if you've seen websites, maybe you've seen a slider or something popping and scroll and slide across the screen, something like that. It's probably written in JavaScript. So yeah, the cool thing about JavaScript also is it's a multi-paradigm language, which just means that there are different ways and methods for you to code in JavaScript. So for example, if you have um, experience in Java, you may be aware that Java is fully object-oriented. Object -oriented, uh, so that just means that it forces you to write um, in, in objects, which um, can be a bit strange, but it's also very nice in the, in the sense that it, it forces you to write in a specific uh, way, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, JavaScript doesn't force you to write in any way like Java. It's event-driven, which means that uh, you can write your code based on events that the user sort of interact with. So for example, if the user were to click a button, something comes up. That's like an example of event-driven. Functional programming is just, for example, writing functions in a very methodical and a step-by-step -step way. So a function to, to have the user do something. If he clicks on a button, a function again to like clear another effect. So that's just like a function of the function of the function. Uh, that can get a bit tedious if you're coming from Java because maybe you just want to create a class. And so imperative programming just means that you can also write in either O or P or you can write in other also ways of programming, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, JavaScript is like free room. You can basically code however you want, which is also very nice. And it also has been transitioned, uh, sorry about that. It has transitioned to become a back-end language. So for the back-end guys there, like, for languages like PHP and Python, JavaScript can also do the same uh, functionality on the back and on the web as those other languages can. So with, of course, like the introduction to like web uh, to Node, uh, Node.js. So Node.js helps us write JavaScript code on the server. Uh, another name for backend is just server side. So yeah, sorry about that. Let me just mute this. Okay, let me just move forward. Okay, cool. So yeah, without further ado, let's like get into the meat of, of this um, webinar. So basically, we're going to be discussing a few things. Um, of course, ES6 and future proof JavaScript. But um, to understand like uh, the updates to JavaScript, we maybe want to look at a few basic concepts like uh, variables and something we call scoping in JavaScript, which is pretty cool. So yeah, without further ado, this on the right hand side, as you may see here, is just like a, a diagram, just uh, showing us, or a like code block rather, showing you like how to declare variables in in JavaScript. So this think of this as like um, the conventional way, the way we always declare declare variables. We just use the var keyword, and so there's a name, there's Spartan, there's a an object, uh, it's actually an array here, name kingdoms, and then there's an object here, name poems, and this is like a boolean value and that's a null value. So that is just basically declaring variables in JavaScript. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna speak about scope real quick. Um, so it says scope in JavaScript refers to the current context of code, which determines the accessibility of variables to JavaScript. Uh, so yeah, maybe that sounds like rocket science, but it basically just means that whichever context, whichever scope you're in, um, all the variables in that scope will sort of know each other or they will sort of be aware that, hey, um, you know, this variable is, is inside this particular function. So inside that function that sort of lives or that exists. So a, a real life example can be, for example, um, if you're at home and maybe your parents or someone, some one of your siblings send you to go to their room, uh, think of their room as a scope or a function, which means that you can't find your bag most probably not hanging out in their room. You, you won't be able to find your bag in your sister's room or your mother's room, for example. When they say, go to my room and fetch bag, they just mean the scope of the room. So you wouldn't go outside and fetch the bag in, a, in another person's uh, room. So think of the scope as in like the area where you sort of exist and sort of know, okay, this is where I'm looking for something, or this is where this object or this thing exists. So that's basically a scope. Um, we get what we call local scope and global scope, or local variables and uh, global variables. And that just means like, for example, to go back to the house analogy, the global scope would just be the house in general. Like, so the different rooms, 
the kitchen and bathroom and stuff like that. That's global. So in the whole house, what we have access to, we can go to different rooms. We can move things from one room to another room. But local, local just means uh, that okay, inside this room is just the things that exist inside, like a particular room, like in the, in the living room. There's maybe TV. Uh, so the TV is local to the living room, but in the living the living room is inside the house, which is global. So that is just a basic like. So uh, just an analogy to help you think about global. And again, just the variables just mean the things that exist inside the scope. So global variables are just variables that exist like in the house. But in the case of your fun of your code, it would be um, variables that exist outside functions. So just variables that are just like written right on top, maybe they and there's no like functions. Uh, so yeah, that's like global, that's global variables. Uh, and then local variable will just be again inside functions. So like if you have a function that does something. Uh, like maybe um, add something to like a cart if you're working. So like with a cart and building like a shopping cart, maybe a uh, shop item can actually be a local variable because it's inside that particular function. So yeah, then we just move on. I think that's enough analogies. Um, so yeah, the biggest difference is between uh, like ES6 and ES5 for, for like the new version of JavaScript is that they introduce new ways to sort of declare variables um, you know, mainly because uh, there they were like compatibility issues, firstly, and also that like the old way of declaring JavaScript had a lot of like issues and problems when you like uh, writing code. So then they introduced what we call let and const, which is basically think of it like um, let let is block scope and const is block scope, which just means that inside a particular block or inside a particular function or code block, for example that variable only exists. So yeah, and var and bar, which was like the old school and more conventional way is, uh, is just like function scope. So it just means that it exists throughout the entirety of the function. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go dive in further to this, but uh, if you look at this like a diagram here, we just look at the first two like sort of columns. Um, I sort of like just want you to look at the, this bar here, you see it's function scope, let this block scope and const so we basically look at examples and that will basically help you actually visually see what is going on here. Uh, so yeah, I don't want you to focus on these two for now, but yeah, let's move on. So yeah, an example of blood scope would just be that, uh, um, yeah, so I've got a code block here. So this one is, uh, I actually wrote the code for a goal celebration. So I watch football a lot. So I just thought I have logic for like a player that actually scores a goal, and if he scores a goal, then he does a celebration, for example. So this is just an example, just demonstrating what block scope actually means. So, um, so again, in ES6 we introduced what we call block scope, which is let and const. Uh, so this is just like a, a visualization of actually uh, the code. So I'm gonna run, run it. I'm gonna over. I'm gonna give an overview of my code and. And hopefully give you an explanation of what's going on. Um, so yeah, basically on our first line we have uh, goal scored, and that's equal to true. Um, we have another variable name, but this is let now, so that's block scope. We have a variable name celebration, which is equal to backflip. Again, guys, I'm going to um, actually code this as well, so I'm going to show you visually as well with code. So don't be too worried about me just giving you pictures. So yeah, I'll give you the code as well. Um, so yeah. We have a variable celebration which is assigned to backflip. Another one is goal scored. Well, it's not a variable. I'm just, I have an if statement here that checks if that is true. Basically, we're going to change celebration again. So uh, think of it as like if the player scores a goal, he's going to do a, the celebration that he was going to do is now assigned to cartwheel. So instead of doing a backflip, he's going to change his mind and he's going to do a cartwheel when he scores a goal. And then the reaction would be like, you have scored a goal. And you are now doing a celebration, which should be a cartwheel because he scored a goal. If he doesn't score a goal, then um, this block will run. It said it's not a goal, and you are still doing a celebration. So the output here is you have scored a goal, and you are doing a cartwheel because again, a block scope just means that in a particular code block, that that variable will exist. So if you're looking at the the if statement here, you see that I have let celebration. And that just means that I'm declaring uh, a block scope variable celebration only if the goal is scored. So inside that block, I have console.log, you have scored a goal, and you are doing a. So this is supposed to be cartwheel because 
in this in this block variable exists only um, um not variable sorry celebration exists so it operates as a uh, cartwheel but then outside of this block we we sort of uh, assign let to we, we sort of assign the celebration to backflip so outside the goal scored because the goal is not scored now so we didn't change celebration because the goal is not scored so now it's back to back a uh, backflip so it's going to be it's not a goal and you're still doing a backflip so that's just an example of what block scope actually means it just means that inside this if statement because it's a code block um let just means let celebration just means that inside that block any um instance of celebration will mean that it's called wheel and outside of it because we declared it here it will be backflip so and this if you may not uh, see like the importance of this right now but it just helps in terms of like reducing bugs because you know that um i declared this variable inside this code block and it will only exist here so that means that you don't have for example code that is sort of like overwriting each other and maybe referencing other code because javascript can't have that way like you can reassign variables and so it can be tricky it can be a bit buggy if you, if you don't understand how the language works you can have a lot of bugs that you don't really know why it's actually happening so that just uh, helps with that block scope so yeah function scope is like um, yeah the old school way of doing things so this is an example of it i don't have errors in this one but uh yeah so basically again just to run down the same example we have a celebration that is assigned to backflip before the player scores the goals he actually he says, hey, I'm, I'm going to do a backflip. And then if he scores a goal, he's like, oh, he changes his mind. He's going to do a cartwheel now. But again, now, uh, just keep in mind, we're using var. So we use var for celebration, and we use var for, yeah, we use var for celebration outside the if statement, and we use var for celebration inside it. So var, again, it's function scope. So as long as, so it doesn't, so if you look on the right-hand side, it says that you are assigning the same variable, which is uh, celebration in the same scope bar does not recognize the if statement to be a different part so this is the thing about bar that it doesn't it's not block scope it's function scope so as long as you're in the same area for for for, for javascript it's not going to know like that's a different block it may mean a different function so again this can have like bugs because this cartwheel is being changed to cartwheel and outside of the of the if statement outside of that code block what's happening is that it's 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 updating uh, celebration to uh, cartwheel.
Uh, hey everybody, uh, can you hear me? Um, apologies about that. I just had like difficulties inside. For some reason, I just disconnected my laptop. Just disconnected and then it reconnected again after some time. So. Okay, uh, hey everybody. Uh, sorry about that. My internet just keeps on. Uh, yeah. Can everyone hear me? Sorry about that. I'll, uh, just let me know if you can hear me and I can just continue and just skim through. Function scoping. Um, a function scoping VAR basically, again, I'm not to show where I was, but I'll just I'll start from the beginning. VAR just VAR is function scope again. So that basically means that um, throughout like the entirety of your of your of your function of your JavaScript code, as long as you don't have like another function and something like that, it won't it will actually update and bar can actually also reassign. Cool, thank you. So bar also can be reassigned. So now if we do like run through our code again on line one, we want to celebrate right. I backflip. Um,
everybody can you hear me uh apologies about that i think my internet is really bad uh, so just let me know when i can just continue um but yeah for me i will just uh yeah, okay, cool. awesome so yeah i was speaking about function scoping uh thanks Adam. so yeah uh var well, just means that it's function scope again it just means that like throughout the entirety of your program or your javascript code uh you can reassign the variable that you declare and this can bring a lot of issues so if you look at our but when the player okay when the player um when the player scores this if he scored a goal then now he basically is going to change his mind yeah let's say i'm going to do a card wheel so now celebration is going to be reassigned to a card wheel so now it's gonna it's gonna out it's gonna out output you have scored a goal and you're doing a it should be card wheel because we reassigned variable which is correct if you look at the output you see you just scored a goal and you're doing a cartwheel. And then outside of that, it's going to be so if it doesn't score a goal, this Uh, hey everybody, uh, yeah, I think Italy is really bad this side. So I think I'm on now. I think I was, yeah, I wasn't on stage. So I think I'm, I should be on. I just let me know. Let me just finish up this example. Um, so yeah, basically uh, after, okay, cool. So in this if statement, we are setting, we're setting celebration to cartwheel. So, is it, so when it scores a goal in this code block, we're setting the celebration to cartwheel, which is fine. It's now going to say, you score a goal, goal and uh, var is not a block scope, it's a it's function scope. So var actually does, doesn't, it actually ignores this if block here. So although we have an if and we set celebration to cartwheel, it doesn't really, it actually doesn't, it doesn't actually care. So for example, it's not an update, it's not a re-update to the backflip available because We've set that up there and it doesn't really look at the block. So although we have an if statement, as I was saying, we've got an if statement um, signing it. And although outside this block, we have variable, we have celebration that's assigned to backflip. Uh, although that's already been set outside, again, bar is function scope, it's not block scope. It doesn't look at the block, it doesn't care, it just reassigns. So now outside of that block, uh, back, backflip, is now going to be cartwheel because of bar and how it's actually function scope and not box scope. So now we're going to get cartwheel and we're going to get cartwheel again. So yeah, so that's one of the issues that have that comes with uh, using bars because you can see now it's like sort of we can reassign variables and so if you don't understand that oh it's not block scope, uh, I should expect my variable to be the second like I should expect it to be cartwheel and you don't get cartwheel then you'll be like. And stuff like that. So that's function. That's var. Uh, yeah, function scopes. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. So I think this is the same example. Yeah, this is the same example I had. Do this move for it. Cool. So another feature we have um, that was introduced to ES6 is called templates. And just think of this as like a more advanced way of sort of like the declaring strings and using strings and stuff like that. Uh, so there's advantages of using template strings. And this is actually an example of how you use template strings. It looks like the quotes, like the single quotes, but actually it's a uh, backtick. I think they call it backtick. 
it's the button right under your escape. So I think you could shift and then I think they call it tilde. So shift and tilde, and then you're gonna use the back picks. So that's how you basically use uh, template literal. Um, the cool thing about it is that you can sort of like define multi-line strings or like outputs uh, sort of like in one variable. So that is cool. You can also write like a more modern way. You can sort of like merge JavaScript expressions into like uh, a template. Let's say this on my side. So don't be too concerned about just images and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, again, uh, just a build up of templates, things you have a with that we call interpolation. This basically just allows you to like merge uh, uh, strings and like other JavaScript ex uh, expressions together. And how you do that is with a dollar symbol and you open the buffalo horns or curly base bases. Um, so yeah, again, you could use expressions inside strings. So think of like this, look at this example file here, this example. A diagram that I'm showing here, this first line, this variable test is sort of like a, a string, right? But now uh, the second line, a, a string is, is a variable now, and now it's it's assigned to like a template string, and it has something which is inside sort of like what you'd see as quotes, but it's not quotes, it's um, um, that, that tilde is that um, symbol. And so there you basically have bar. So again, you use the dollar symbol, and then you open the buffalo points, and then basically you can use var inside the string. So it's like super cool. So like you don't have to like have a plus and then have the quotes and then have the plus again. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, so yeah, let me just move on. And so I'm just gonna demo this real quick and then yeah, we can basically move on. So just let me see if you can see my screen. Um, so yeah, it's called back ticks. So again, yeah, this is called back ticks. So yeah, let me just demonstrate real quick. Let me present my screen. Um, oh no, just give me a sec. I want to present my screen. Uh, actually, here we go. Uh, screen sharing, yeah. Okay, give me a sec. I'm just presenting my screen now. Cool, that's awesome. I hope all is well. My sound is fine and back on. And yeah, looks like I'm presenting. That is cool. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So I think we're looking at, so yeah, we looked at templates, template strings and stuff like that. Um, so let me just present, okay, cool. So yeah, again, uh, this is bar. I already wrote these functions. So let me just do this further. And so, okay, so let's declare like variable and stuff like that. So let's var name is equal to. Uh, and, uh, eight, 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 eight. Uh, so James is twenty years old. Uh, well, we have uh, we have these two variables, and again, that's just how you use var. And again, var is function scope. So, so this variable name will exist throughout the entirety of our whole code. Um, that's basically it. I have like a demonstration here of actually using scoping and stuff like that. So. On line 28, we have a variable that's named species. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah. So on line 28, we have a variable named species and it's assigned to human. And then we have a function here. And inside that function, we are reassigning the same variable species to werewolf. And so inside the function block, uh, of course, uh, uh, is actually actually function scope. So now that we actually have a function, we can actually see what, what actually VAR does. So if you were to call this function, so for example, let me just do, let me see, like, let me comment out my other code. And OK, awesome stuff. So we've got this function called transform, right? So if we go to the log uh, species before we call the function, it's going to get human, right? And then when we call the function, it's going to print out species but now again, species is inside the function. So yeah, it's assigned to werewolf. So you, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see human, and then on when we call the transform function, you're gonna see werewolf, because werewolf is a function that is locally, sorry, species is a function that's locally inside the transform uh, uh, a function. It's a variable that's local. So what, what you're gonna get here is you're gonna get werewolf, and then we're gonna print out again human. So let's output and complete maybe human species. 
Um, here we go. So you can see the output here. We have human, we have not species, werewolf, and we have human. Here we go. Um, so again, uh, var is function scope. So you can reassign the same variable, um, and it only exists inside here. So that is it. Like although the same function exists outside, uh, it's only going to print um, werewolf because we inside this function. So that's how var actually works. And then um, you sort of demonstrate our, let me just comment. Uh, uh, okay, cool. And then we were speaking about block scope. So let me just um, comment this. And then, and then we have here goal score is equal to true. And then celebration is backflip. We have an if statement that's basically going to run. This is going to be true because he scored a goal now, and now we are just reassigning. Um, we we are reassigning celebrate celebration to Cartier. So let's print this and see. Yeah. Oh, okay. We need to do this. Let's do this. Okay. Cool. So I don't know if you can see this now, but uh, inside this code block, because let introduces what we call block scope again. Just think of it as in this particular block. So in this code block, this variable exists only. So it doesn't actually know uh, of the of the same variable or the same name variable rather that exists outside. It just knows that okay, as long as I'm inside this particular code block, I exist, and I don't care about the guys outside. So what you're gonna get is let is equal to cartwheel. And then we're going to be, the output is going to be, you have scored a goal, and now you're doing a cartwheel, uh, which is true. And I'll tell of this because, again, this block no longer exists. It's going to be you, it's not a goal, and you're still doing a backflip. Because, again, uh, late introduces block scope. So celebration, cartwheel in this instance will only exist. Celebration in this instance will only exist for this particular block. So outside that block, if you print the same variable that's um, declared outside the function or outside the code block rather, like here we have line 47, um, you will see that it's going to output back because the same the same variables uh, sort of declared outside that block. So that's nice because that just means that we are aware that um, inside this code block, this variable exists only. So it doesn't know about the other instances. So that's cool in, in, the, in the sense of like, limiting bugs because you will know for example that yeah this variable only exists here and i should i shouldn't expect anything else other than cartwheel in this code block so yeah um that's basically an overview of that so yeah just i hope my screen was presented and uh that was yeah that went well so let me just resume uh okay. cool. yeah i think i'm there so yeah, function. Okay, cool. So yeah, so I've got like these diagrams that sort of like illustrate how we will declare functions in ES5, which is like the older version, and ES6 again, which is like um, ECMAScript 6, JavaScript 2015. So this is just like how we used to declare function. You had to have had the function keyword, and then afterwards you got the function name. In this case, we have func. Uh, and then we have three parameters, A, B, and C, and then inside that function body, we're just returning A plus B plus C. Now in ES6, we have like a more modular way of doing things. So you just have let, you can basically assign variables to your functions, and then you would, so you don't have to include the function keyword, as you can see, you just have the name of the function, and then you just have the equal to, and then you have to open your, your not your curly braces, your, 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 what is this? Uh, Brackets. There we go. Yeah, your brackets. So you open your brackets, and that basically indicates to the compiler or the JavaScript that hey, this is a function. It has the parentheses. Actually, it's the actual term parentheses, and then we have an equal to sign and a greater than sign, and then we have that 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 just introduces arrow function. That just means an arrow function, and then we have a plus b plus c. That's going to return the answer of that. Um, so that's how we do it in uh, ES6. And then again, objects. So in ES5, you would have objects which are just like normal variables we have var object is equal to a is like a property inside object and then but then it's a method so functions on objects are called methods so it's a method 
on object and then it just has two parameters c and d and uh, but the, the function body is empty and we also have the same with b b is also a method on the object object and it has two parameters e and f and it just it doesn't have anything in the body in es6 we don't have again the function keyword we just have a let object uh, or the name of your object rather and then there we have a uh, the function name or the method rather so we have a which is a method on the object and then we have these two um, parentheses uh with these two parameters sorry c and d and then the body is returning anything um cool no worries i will send you cool no worries uh okay. yeah guys i um, think i'm taking a bit of time so i'm just gonna wrap up real quick i'm just gonna skim through the stuff but i'm gonna basically send this and the code to you people so I know that we are going over time, but yeah, I did stuff late as well. So if you uh, kind of stay, stay tuned. Uh, and again, we introduced what we call uh, object matching, which is like a, a way of sort of like um, matching objects and variables inside objects. So in the older way of doing things, uh, you would have like uh, so the first diagram you see var object and that's equal to a what's well, it's equal to an object. So in the what properties we have a which is assigned to one, we have B assigned to two, and C assigned to C uh, to three. So this is an object that just has properties A, B, and C that's assigned to numbers, right? Um, and then in ES5, to, um, to match those particular properties inside the object, you would have to have had declared variables like var A, var B, and var, var C, and then you assign those variables to the object dot, dot A, or object dot B, or object dot C. So that's getting the particular property on the object and just assigning that to uh, variable A, B, or C. But now in JavaScript, in ECMA 6 or JavaScript uh, 2015, basically you can do something that we call destructuring, which is a way of assigning or matching object variables and names and stuff like that very easily. So we do something like this, let A, B, and C. Um, let, and you open the buffalo horns or the curly braces. And then inside they basically let you know that they're working with objects now. And then when you assign it to an object, you basically sort of match uh, sort of like the key. And then you basically have a variable A, the same way you would do this, but like using one line instead of three. So you have let A, B, and C equal to object. So what's going to be is going to be exactly as this ES6, uh, this, this ES65 on the left hand side will be, but without the object of A, object of B, object of C. Again, I will demonstrate this. So. I'll demonstrate this side of that. And we also have array matching, which is like the same concept that we did to, to, um, to objects, but now to, on, on arrays, actually. So here we've got a constant A. Again, I, I don't think I spoke about constants, but a constant is just a variable that doesn't change. Um, so if you've written in other languages, you may be aware of like final or like stuff like that. Uh, so a constant is just a variable that doesn't change. So yeah, this is like a, we're assigning this to a, uh, to a variable name a, a constant a, it's it's a, an array and it stores. Okay, it stores a, a one, two, three, four, five. So it just stores like a list or like an array of numbers. And now we're basically destructuring um, the first and second number. We have another. So we've got the const keyword, and then there we are set. We are sort of surround first and second by um, the square brackets, which is like an indication that we're going to use arrays or we're going to use like a array matching or destructuring and then we assign it to a which was our first array that we used our initial one so basically what this code is going to do it's going to out so if you have to output the first we get one because if you actually match like uh the first instance in in the a array you will see uh number one is the first and number two is the second number in the array so it only makes sense that first is one and second is two because of the sense of matching arrays um yeah you yeah you'll get uh, the material so yeah we'll save the material and also the code as well so yeah it's okay if you have to leave um yeah, let me just run a demo quickly on objects okay, let me present my screen actually sorry uh, um present my screen present screen um
um, cool so yeah just let me know if you can see the screen um so yeah we basically like uh, have a variable we have a variable that's assigned greeting so this could be anything so let's say let let us again block so just like cons and say hey um this thing is awesome welcome to the new age so if we were to print uh, uh okay, it's fine uh, sorry so again i'm using template little of template strings yeah i've got the back ticks so you see if you could remove the back ticks, can you see it's sort of like as this so you can basically do that okay there you go and then you just make sure that you close the back ticks so this is cool because again you can have like multi-line statements in one so for example if i to print out okay let me console log console log console log uh, i have um, Cool. So as you can see, like actually like takes in the new line. So you don't have to like in the old way of doing things, you had to like have a new line character, uh, backslash tab, T, like the backslash N, stuff like that. So you don't need that here. And it's like super consistent. So like if you do this, for example, and you actually like print out, you actually add the tab in the space, which is pretty nice. So this is cool in terms of like having multi-line comments and stuff like that. Um, but it actually gets better. So you can do something like this so you can have expressions so if i comment this out that i have for example like i've got a function i've got a variable here named string and it says c4 is in day one and it adds up one two and three so if you want to ha like have expressions inside your um back ticks or inside your string brother you can just like have the dollar symbol and you open the buffalo horns and then you can have any expression in there it will sort of calculate it so if you um, so I'm going to print out. Um, because of log string, uh, and we're just going to see C4 is in the one, it adds three. Adds up to three. Yeah, no, no, six. Sorry, my math is bad. <laughs> so one plus two plus three, it's six. So you can see there that we're sort of doing what you would do, like in the old way of JavaScript, you do something like um, A plus, and then three plus six. Plus we are here. So you would do something like this. So can you see like this um template uh literals actually replaces so like interpolation or concatenation, whatever you want to call it. It just replaces that because you can actually have expressions inside your, your like quotes, not really quotes, but inside like your inside like some of the back ticks. So that's pretty cool. That's another ethics feature that's really helpful. It helps with a lot of cases, so that is nice. Um, I think okay, maybe I've got other stuff to present. Cool. So again, we look at functions. So the other way of this declaring function, we do something like this. Uh, function add, for example, let's say maybe let's make our function a bit more descriptive. We have a function add, we will add three numbers and should return it, and then let's just pass one two, three. So that's so this is the old way of doing things. It should give us a total of these numbers. Uh, ABC. Okay. Uh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. That's why that that is why. Okay, cool. It's fine. Let me just console that log it because I should return it. I need a variable that's assigned to it. Yeah. Um. So now you're gonna get six. There we go. Cool. So. So yeah. So basically, as you can see, um. Yeah, so now as you can see, this is like the old way of doing things. So, we we'll be familiar with that. Let me just come that out. And in ES6, how we do this is we would do something like uh, let add. And so we just have a equal to, and then we just pass in A, B. So we just pass in the parameters. And then now we have the equal to and the greater than sign. Yeah, we can sign we have A, we have, we have something like let me do. So that's like your, your function body. So what you would have here from there to here, you basically do console.log and then we just have an A plus B plus A. Now we would call our function. Uh, we would see the same thing. I remember. Let's see. 
Oh yeah, that's what now we're gonna get uh nine, eight, nine, five, six, seven, seven, seven. We're gonna get seven. As you can see, um you've gotta make sure that you pass in the arguments that I think that's uh so What's going on? Okay, yeah, cool. Still live, right? Okay. Yeah, I think I'm good. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so this is okay. So, the old way of doing, the old way of working with objects again in JavaScript, you do something like this, uh, you would have something like, uh, let student, uh, you would have something like let uh, BMW, let car equal to, and then you have something like um, name BMW, and then you have um, new car, and then you have something like this function, and then it's like uh, maybe console the log, uh, we are moving. So then you can just like uh, you can do car you can do, do car dot new car so you can see we are moving so as you can see like this is the only way of doing things you would have to like have the the attribute or the property on the object car which is move car but in this case it's a function so we call it a method. And then, if we call car dot move car with the parentheses, we're basically calling the method on the object, and then it's gonna output we are moving, as you can see. So this is like the old way of doing things. So the new way of doing it would be something like this. I've got a different one, so I hope it's not too much confusion. So let me actually just have the same function. So we can actually have car. Uh, so let's just have the same variable, the same object. We have this. And now we've just got move car. So move car is our method, and then it doesn't take in anything. It doesn't take in anything. You just basically do. Um, hey, basically, hey, basically, you just do this. There you go. Console log. We are moving. So as you can see, again, the main difference is that it sort of like omits the function keyword. So you have something like call it move car. Um, you should see uh, cars already beat. Yeah, you know. Come on. Uh, okay. Um, so let me just speak louder. Okay, cool. So as you can see, uh, yeah, my sound is not good. Uh, sorry. Uh, wait, okay, wait, okay, sorry. Okay. Um, let me just share my screen again. I think, oh, wait, uh, yeah, there we go. No, 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 I'm sharing the wrong screen. Sorry about that. Um, cool. So, I, I was just basically showing the biggest difference between using objects in ES in ES5 and ES6. So in ES5, you would if we were to, to declare in an object with the name car. Hey? So you say let car equal to object, and then the name is like a property on the object is BMW. We have a, a another property, but it's called move car, and it has the keyword function, which now means it's a method because methods are um, functions. They are functions in, inside objects. So now move car is a method, and so if we were to call car dot move car. That's our method. Pass in the parentheses, you're going to see we are moving. That's our function. That's our method. But that's like the ES5 way. As you can see, there's like a function keyword and it's just like lengthy. So now we have another way of doing it. ES6 basically have um, car. So 
we have the same thing, but we just have move call without any like uh, without any function keyword there. Without any colon, colon, yeah. Um, so yeah. So if we do say call dot move call, we can see we are moving the call, which is the same, but it's like shorthand as well. Um, so we have the structuring. Yeah, I think I'm almost there. So again, we have the structuring. So let me just this my screen. Okay, cool, awesome. So I'm just going to show you how we so the structure. This was a new feature, so I can't really show you how we used to. Okay, I can actually for for object. I can show you how we did it. Okay, cool. So you have got an object that has named student, right? Students. Yeah, students. Sorry, student. It has his name, his mic, his age is 21, his school is appeared in day of high school. Don't ask me the address uh, <laughs> of this high school. Um, so we have that. So this is the old way of this is the ES5. Um, this is the ES5 way of sort of like um, matching objects or the distracting objects. So now what we would do is we would console log. So can you see he wants to get the student name, he wants to get the student age and the student school. So, but then he's assigning it to student.name because student is the object that we sort of gain the information from. So, as you can see, if we do uh, to, to print, you, as you may sort of like anticipate what's going to happen, you're going to see the same object properties out. So, you're going to see Mike, you're going to see 21, you're going to see his high schools are in their high school. Um, that's okay, but yeah, it's a bit lengthy because we have like different variables just to match like um, object properties. And so this is like an old way of doing things. And so in ES6, we basically introduce again the structuring or object matching. So you can basically do something like this. You can achieve this in like one line of code in ES6, which is super cool. So you would actually do something like this. So we still have our student, uh, we still have our student object here. It's like a student object, but now we basically have a variable that's uh, name, age, and that school. Uh, and now we're just assigning that to the object. So this is like what's going to do? It's going to map. It's going to map to this particular object, which is here. We declared it there. It's going to go in there and find name and say, okay, cool. I'm going to name this name variable the, the the value or the key value of the name that's assigned on the object student. So it's going to do the same with age, it's going to do the same with school. It's going to go in on the object, it's going to find that variable, it's going to get the value, it's going to assign it the name. So if you do console.log name and then age and then school. Oops. So yeah, this is distracting. This is just like um, matching data. Names already declared. What did I do? Um, hmm. I think I'm using this code somewhere. Uh, this one. Uh, Okay, let me just go back back on the screen here. Um, okay. Okay, cool. let me just do this. Uh, okay, let's start from the beginning. So we've got the student object. Okay, cool. Uh, let me just comment this code out. I'm reassigning. Okay, okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use var because you can reassign with var. So I'm gonna make my life easier. So let me just do this. Uh, let me console it log. Uh, let's just console it log. Yeah, let's console it log. It should work. Yeah. Again, we're distracting. So we're basically saying. Um, let me just put this back down here to make it easy to see. We're basically saying we want to get the name, age, and school, but these are variables. So we are assigning name. Name should be Mike. The age should be age should be twenty one, and school should be opinion there. So oh, 
Okay, cool, awesome stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, I will share this information. So yeah, if you have to leave, feel free to leave. Uh, yeah, thanks guys for staying tuned. So it should print. Okay, this is fine. So what I'm gonna do, let's just actually do this. Because you can be assigned variables. There we go, awesome. So for now, we're gonna just use var for, for the sake of JavaScript and just making, just taking advantage of the fact that you can use var because it's sort of being play available. Uh, and then we can use age and we can use a, we can use school. Okay, cool. So now you, what you should see is Mike 21 happening in high school. So as you can see, we sort of like distracted or we sort of like matched um, variables to the objects without even like doing this the same thing that we did here on on those two on, on those three lines. So we can do it one line. So this is also a cool feature of ES6. It's called distracting. So I highly recommend recommend that you guys do your research about this and just play around with stuff like this and see how well, how cool it actually is. Um, so you may be so maybe wondering how to sort of update. So how do you use another variable that's not inside like the, the object? So I'm gonna show you an example of how we sort of do that. Um, let me just see, did it been cool? Okay, cool, okay, fine. Uh, yeah, cool, so guys, I'm actually finishing up quick, so I'll be finished like in a second or two, so just, um, just hang in there. So cool, so this is like, if you may be wondering, okay, I see that you've got name, you've got age, and you've got school as variables, but, um, how does it actually know? Because for example, what if I want name to be something, or what if I want these variables to be something else, but I still want to sort of get name. So if you're thinking that, that's cool. So this is how we can actually do it. So what, what you have to do is, because you sort of match, so you have to do something like this. Um, you have to do let, or we can use var if it gives us edit again. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, thanks guys, cool. I'm actually finishing up right now shortly. So you've got name. Uh, remember on our object, where's our object? It's, it's coming down. So let me just bring our object down here. That's a long question. Okay. Um, cool. So uh, our object. So again, how how you how how you how you do that? Cheers. Okay. okay. Cheers, guys. How you do that is basically you you basically assign name to student name. So you have name and then you have your the code on there and that basically says okay that name variable that's on the object i want it to be student name and that age variable that's on the object on the student object i want it to be student age and school we'll just leave it at school because we just want to test to see if it actually works so now we can call the log student name because again we sort of are using the name that's on the object and then we can do something like this uh, student age because now it's not exactly the same as the object. So now you sort of want to take it and see what it actually work. It should give us Mike, it should give us 21. Although we are printing student name, which is a new variable that we sort of like assign. So this is how you can also do use the same strategy, but if you want to change your name to actually make sure that, hey, I actually understand this. Um, okay, cool. Um, yeah, guys, so I think, um, yeah, I think I'll maybe just show you how we did ES6. I will actually use classes, so that's it. Um, so I can actually just show you uh, how we actually did classes. So in the older versions of JavaScript, actually, uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. So cool. So in the older version of JavaScript, you do something like function uh, constructor function. So you do something like this. I'm sure a few of you may have seen it. You've got a function keyword and you've got a student. And if you pass in name and age, and so what you actually do is something like uh, let's do C4 again. Let C4. So C4 is like good friends. Feel free to new student. Uh, you pass in the name, you pass in the age, right? Uh, so now we can consider the log. So you're gonna see, yeah, C4, yeah, you wanna get it in C4.name. So it's gonna print C4. And again, how you would like use uh, methods on, on, on this like function constructor objects is you would have to do student, which is like the object name, 
for the function rather the function name then you have the prototype which is like just letting you know that you're working with objects and then that is like the the method or the function that you want to use on this particular object so so now if we do c4 dot go to school um it's gonna be c4 20 is going to school uh, but yeah, this is like the old way of doing things. Again, as you can see, there's a lot of like code that like you don't know prototype of this. That it's like it's it's just getting a bit messy now with like the older way of doing things. So the new way of doing things, you could actually use classes. I'm not too sure again to talk about classes, but you can do something like this where you just it's exactly the same, but we have a class student. Here we go, and then we pass in the constructor the name and the age. And then we just do something like this. Um, so we need to use C4 console and log zero dot. So there we go. So this is like using classes. So again, in ES6, we sort of introduced the idea of classes because many people came from uh, like um, other high high level programming languages. So they use classes, and so they wanted um, to like have a similar way of writing code. Um, so yeah, so class is basically a way, it's a blueprint or uh, it allows you to like sort of have a guideline or like a blueprint of actual code. So. I'm sure you may be aware with classes, but yeah, that's basically like um, I could have other students like Jane and Jane also. She would just inherit the property, so that's just how classes and stuff works. So they introduced this concept in JavaScript, but again, it just um, sort of compiles back to like objects and stuff like that. So that is just cool to know. Um, so yeah, basically that's it, guys. Uh, I just basically gave like a rundown of ES6 and the future of JavaScript. There's a lot of cool features. Uh, there's like a lot more features, and they keep on adding new features. So yeah, I think um, that's about it, guys. Thank you for like joining in. Uh, thank you for staying tuned. Uh, so yeah, um, I'll, I'll share the, the slides and, and the video as well. All right, so thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks.